Hello and welcome to Bob and Talk. In this video, I will show you how to make this ruffle bag. Let's start with an empty canvas and come to the rectangle tool. We'll start with creating a rectangle 12 inches wide by 9 inches high. And then from here on, you can edit however you like the bottom. Let's go to the curve corner tool. We'll left click on the corner and start dragging. And you can right click at the same time to enter even or uneven measurements for each side. I'll enter three inches on each side and make that symmetric on left and right side. And you can do it however you like. Next, I will edit my corners any way you like. Make any adjustments that you need to make the shape that you want. I'm holding the shift key to make sure that this line is straight as I'm pulling each side and adjust until I'm happy with my final shape. Once I have the final shape finalized, I will right click and create a symmetric pattern with sewing. That will be my back. So I'll have a front and back for the bag. And next I'll just organize my pattern pieces so they're nice and neat on my 2D window. With my edit pattern tool, I will right click on all of my segments to come up with a total measurement. You can see 26.389 in my cursor that will be the length of my side piece or my gusset. So let's go to the a rectangle tool and create the gusset. I'm going to give that 26.39, which is the total length of the sides, and then make it a height of two inches. Next, I'm just going to organize my pieces, have my gusset, my bottom piece underneath, and I can start sewing. So I'm going to use the free sewing instead of the segment so I can go through all of the segments at once and then sew that to my gusset. I'll do the same for the other side and make sure that all of them are connected. When you're finished with your sewing, just come to the 3D window and organize your pattern pieces so that you can see which one is the front, the bottom, the side, and have a good visual and make sure that everything looks good together. And then we can come to avatar and choose a 3D avatar to fill in or to simulate around just so we can have a better simulation. Let's also choose random color patterns so that we can see better the separate pattern pieces. So come to the roll of fabric and select random color. That gives you a better visual. Now we can go to avatar, click and go to 3D shapes and choose the most appropriate shape that will help you simulate around that. I'm going to choose this curved shape as it looks like my bag and I will add that to my 3D space. Make sure you add to workspace, find where the shape is, drag it so it is organized better for your particular layout. And now we can also change the size and the orientation of the shape. And I also want to match the width of the 3D shape to the width of my bag. So I'm going to organize the pieces. Left click on the little square there to get the three pulleys that can help you change width, height, and depth. Organize your pattern pieces around it. And I realize I have two 3D shapes, so I have to delete one. I just want to organize my pieces first. And then I'll come to the other shape. Left click, delete it, and then finish all of my organization. My shape looks pretty good. So I will right click on the front and back pattern pieces and strengthen those two so they can stay up when I simulate and I'm ready to hit simulate. And you can see now that the shape stays up nicely. At this point, I also want to organize my patterns and name them. So I'm going to come to the pattern annotation tool that capital A and give each pattern piece a name. What is my front? What is my back? What is my bottom? If you have various compartments, if you have pockets, 
this becomes a crucial necessity to make sure that all of your pattern pieces are named, especially when you have multiples that look exactly the same. Next, we'll create the ruffle piece. You can either check the measurement and create a new rectangle, or you can just copy and paste the bottom piece because I know that I had the exact measurement of what my side seam is. So I'm going to just copy and paste that shape, and then I will edit that to be longer and wider. I'm going to change the name immediately so I don't confuse it with my bottom. And now with the pattern piece selected, I'm just going to left click, drag and right click at the same time to get an exact measurement of the width that I want. I'm going to make my ruffle as wide as I like. So I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I'll make it about um, five inches and then I'm going to right click and create a symmetric pattern with sewing so that whatever I sew on one piece will immediately transfer onto the other piece. So now I will also want to add some annotation so I don't mix up the pattern pieces and I want to know which one is my front ruffle and which one is my back ruffle and that helps me organize all my pattern pieces and now I'm ready to sew so I'll come to my free sewing tool or your segment tool depending on if you want to sew to the bottom ruffle piece or to the body of the back so i'll use the free sewing tool that gives me both sides and now i am ready to simulate with both sides sewn onto the body let's come to the 3d window and take a look how we need to organize our pieces Make sure that the sewing lines look good, they're not crisscrossing, and I'm ready to simulate. Don't like my bag simulated on the floor, so what I'm gonna do is pull up the pattern pieces and the ruffles, and I'm gonna select the front and back, and I'm gonna freeze them in space. I'm gonna simulate again to see what happens, so click the space bar and evaluate and see if you like what it looks like. And if you don't like what the ruffle looks like, now you can make it longer, wider, you can add more gathering, and do whatever edits you like. Now I can also delete the 3D avatar since my bag is frozen in space and I'm ready to create my handle. So let's start with rectangles. Decide on the width that you want for your handles. For example, I'm choosing nine inches here, but that seems like a very short handle. I want something that goes over the shoulder. So I'm going to left click and give width and height, 20 inches for length and one inch for the width of my handles and I'm also gonna right click and create a symmetric pattern with sewing so that I can create the changes on one and have them done on the other one with the sewing. Now I need to create an internal rectangle that will be the sewing lines. If you want an actual rectangle, you can choose a rectangle or if you want, you can create polygon lines and create individual lines. Or in my case, I will do maybe a zigzag line and you can see I'm measuring my width from the sides and taking a look at those measurements on the side and I'll create somewhat of a zigzag line that will become my stitching and also I can add top stitch this is my shape now I'm gonna left click on it and copy it to the other side you can see that it automatically shows on the other handle at this point you can also come in closer and change the location make sure that you're happy with how far away the stitching is from the edges and how wide it is and just find that perfect location and size for your stitching. Next I'm going to choose the location of where the stitching is going to be on the body so copy the stitching and choose a location on the body of the bag. You can choose the number of shapes how many of these do you want. I would do one at a time. You can do both of them at the same time but it will have a weird placement so you would still have to edit each one. You can rotate to match the stitching if you want it to be vertical the same as on the handle. If you want different location or different rotation you can select each one and choose where and how it should be placed on the body. You can take a look at the distance
distance, the angle, and make sure that you're happy with your final position. When you're happy with the placement, you can come to the sewing. I'm going to use the segment sewing tool and I will select each line separately and make sure that I'm matching the positioning and the rotation. Make sure that the vertical lines are matching well. And then once you add one side of the strap, it's not a bad idea to take a look at what it looks like in the 3D window and you can rotate and reposition the handles or simulate just to see which way are the handles positioned. So you can judge then in the 2D window how to place and where to place the next stitching. So I'm going to pull the handles on each side just to see what they look like. And I'm going to stitch the other side of the strap, still have the segment sewing machine tool in my hand. I'm going to left click on each segment separately and make sure that I'm matching the direction of the internal lines on the body of the bag. Let's go back to the 3D window, click simulate and you will see the handle snap back. Something goes wrong, this is where you see it. I have to pull this down a little bit to make sure that it's not twisted weirdly. Let me see the back. It looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to grab each handle with the select tool and pull it up. Click the space bar to hold it in space while you're looking around. And I just want my handles to be up. So I'm going to hold the handles up there. Click the space bar and then hold W, left click wherever you want to add a pin and that will hold my handles up in space. I want a better way to hang my handbag in the 3D space. So I'm going to go to avatar and choose one of those 3D shapes. So I'll choose a cylinder that I can suspend in the air and then hang the bag on that. Left click on the little square to get the little pulleys with which you can make the cylinder much thinner, much smaller. You can make it shorter, longer, whatever you need to. So I'm going to pull a little bit more, make it a perfect circle and then I'm going to bring it up in the air. It's a little too long so I'm just going to make it a little bit shorter and I'm going to pull it all the way up in between the handle. I'm I'm just going to adjust it a little bit more so it's perfectly centered in the middle. And now I'm ready to come and delete the pins. I don't need them anymore because now the bag can just hang on this 3D cylinder. I'm going to simulate one more time to see what the bag looks like. It's hanging nicely on the cylinder and I'm going to get rid of strengthening and freezing. So I'm going to unfreeze and unstrengthen just to see how it simulates. And keep in mind that this is in the regular simulation material so it really collapses. I need to assign some kind of leather or stiff fabric or whatever I need my final material to be. So I'm going to keep this strengthened right now just the front and the back. So right click, select strengthen and let's assign some leather to this bag. So I'm going to go to library select fabric and move along all the way down to trim full grain leather. I'm going to left double click on that to appear in the object browser, open up the property editor and I'm also going to look for leather. Here's a lambskin. I'm going to left double click on that and now I have that also in my object browser and I'm ready to assign that to my pattern pieces. So I'm going to select all of the body and handle pieces. I'm going to left click once on full grain leather. That assigned all of the pieces and then left click and assign lambskin to the ruffles. Now I'm ready to unstrengthen and make sure they have selected the thick textured surface so you can actually see what these leathers look like but you can see already that the bag is staying really nice and stiff and it simulates and it does not collapse like it did with the soft fabric material. Next I want to choose properties so I'll come all the way down in property editor to type choose leather and then come to texture make sure that desaturation is on so you can choose like color choose on color select the color that you like click ok and you will see the color on the 3D window. If you're not happy with that color, you can choose any other color you like. Click OK when you're done. Next, we would like to come to the front or back or side of the leather. Make sure that for each one you have the material and the color that you want. If you want the same, you can left click on use same material, use same color or select whatever color you want for any of the pattern pieces. Click OK and you can see my handles and you can see also the back change so you may have to flip your pattern pieces in the 2D arrangement. 
and you may have to sew them in a different order. So I'm going to change this back to this teal color and I am happy with this right now. All I want to do now is change the leather lambskin ruffles, the front. I'm going to also take a look at the color and choose a bright color just so we can see the contrast. I am happy with this combination. We can clearly see the ruffles. Next thing I want to do is the top stitching. Let's go to object browser, select the top stitching panel. And now we have some default top stitch. Left double click and we have a variety of top stitch that are preset here. So I'm going to choose maybe a single stitch. This chain stitch looks really good. So I'm going to left double click to bring that into my object browser. And let's choose one more top stitch. Let's maybe a double needle or triple needle. This triple needle looks really good. So this time I'm going to drag it and drop it in the object browser. Now I'm ready to apply my top stitching. So let's open up the 2D window and select the top stitching tool. So we can use the segment or the free top stitch. I'll work with the free top stitch because it gives me more freedom. Left click, start from the beginning and left click at the end and select the top stitching that you want in the object browser. And let's go to the 3D window and take a look to see what the top stitching looks like. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit to get a better view you can see that it is a default white top stitch so i want to give it some color and more properties so go down to the property editor and i'm just gonna select the offset to be a little further away that's too much so i'll go back to 1 16th like how close this is to the edge and i'm gonna come all the way down to color and select a matching color blue see what it looks like or a contrast pink color so you can see it better. So I like this cheeky pink, left click OK, and make sure that it is on both sides. I have symmetric sewing, so it is on both sides of the pattern, front and back. I also like my top stitch to be a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna come to thread thickness and put 200, oh, that's way too big and wide. So I'm gonna give it 100. That's perfect thickness, you can see it, but it's not, to obnoxiously wide. Now we can go to the crisscross at the handles and apply different top stitch. So I'm just gonna left click on that with the segment top stitch, but I can see that the offset is really far. So I wanna preserve the top stitch for the body and create a new top stitch for the handle. So I'm gonna left click and copy this lock stitch that I have and I'm gonna give it a name so I know which one is the handles and which one is the body. This way I can have the same exact top stitch but with a different offset or different distance from the edge. I can change the offset now to be a zero so it's right on top of the original stitching and I'm gonna segment top stitch it and you can see that it's really right on top of the original sewing. Let's also add some triple stitching onto the handles and change the color to a more contrast or matching color so we can see what that looks like. I'm going to choose a blue color that's very similar and click OK. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to apply it with the segment top stitch tool onto the handles on the edges and you can see it on the left of the handle already. And if you're happy with that, you can keep it. If not, you can change the color, change the stitching. That looks like a lot of top stitching. You can also assign different top stitching and change the material of the stitching. I'm happy with shiny fabric. And I'm going to change the thickness of it to be a bit thicker again. 100 looks really good to me. I am happy with my top stitching. So let's take a look in this 3D window see what the bag looks like. It is really nice and bright. So let's do one more color change. I want to get this ruffle to be a little more muted in color. So I'm going to left click on leather lambskin, open the property editor, go to color and just look for something that is just not so bright. This more blush muted pink, party pink looks really good. 
So I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm happy with this color combination. I'm going to simulate one more time to make sure everything looks good. Click the space bar and I'm happy with how the bag is hanging, but I want to change the color of my 3D object. I think it can be matching a little bit better. So come down to color and choose something that would be better for my overall color palette. And I'm happy with this lavender color. I think it looks good. It's simulated well, it's holding nice and tight, it's not collapsing anymore. The leather looks like leather in terms of holding the shape, so I'm overall very happy. So thank you for watching Bobbin Talk, like and subscribe, and feel free to ask any questions.